neurons, neurogenesis, neurology. These are all words that we know and understand completely. The mind is a simple thing. For understanding how the mind works in the context of society, however, these terms are all trash and need to be discarded immediately like the archaic garbage they are. Consciousness is known as a complex system. Other examples of complex systems would be our immune systems and the economy. We as humans are relatively, absolutely horrendous at being able to understand complex systems. Although there are a few people out there who do have a better understanding of these concepts. Neuroplasticity is the mind's ability to change and adapt. In the 1990s, they discovered that adults do have some levels of neurogenesis left. Yeah, I'm gonna need that term back out of the trash, hold on. So apparently something like exercise can increase our levels of neurogenesis, while something like depression would decrease our levels of neurogenesis. This would suggest that more engaging and demanding activity can help us retain neuroplasticity. Studies have shown that even something like playing a first-person shooter can help us develop our spatial reasoning skills. If you compare some of the similarities between exercise and playing video games, we start to realize that perhaps video games are not the worst thing for the mind after all. Exercise and video games are both goal-oriented activities, and I believe that's the driving factor here. I've even heard of a Minecraft community where people with developmental issues can gather and safely try to interact with one another, and they learn to communicate better. It would make sense that our education system is also goal-oriented, with the grades and such. The problem is, a percentage on a paper isn't really going to motivate everybody in the classroom. The problem is, I can't help but look back on this last school year and just think that I completely wasted it. Not because I was, like, not doing my school or anything, just because it doesn't seem like it matters that much. The promise of a college degree landing you a solid job is not exactly as solid as it once was. And it's certainly going to cost you both your time and money, and depending on what kind of person you are, your sanity. Personally, I pretty much skated through high school, and admittedly, I am a college dropout. So absolutely, I am going to be biased here, although I'm not the only one to drop out of college. In fact, if you spend eight years at the university that I went to, you have less than a 50% chance of graduating from any kind of class or, or getting any kind of degree whatsoever. Less than 50%, eight years to get a four-year degree. That's insanity. So after eight years and an average of $15,000 a year, where that's if you're getting aid, that's if you're getting scholarships and government help, you still have less than a 50% chance of walking away from this university with a degree. Now I know you could say it's up to the students, but how are the professors not inspiring more people? How are so many people uninterested in their education going to university? You could blame this on a variety of factors, but the bottom line is you shouldn't be wasting the prime of your life for a gamble at your future. If you have a clear idea of what you want to do and that involves college, then by all means, do it. I just think it's foolish to believe that college is the only option to better yourself intellectually. With how fast technologies are developing, there are so many blue sky areas to work in that education cannot keep up with the demand for stuff like AI. Even with something like video editing, there's probably going to be more information online than in all of the universities combined. If you want to become something like a lawyer or a doctor, then yes, go to college. But if you want to do something like engineer bizarre synths in Reactor 6, then, you know, there's only a couple of guys online that know what that even means. What I'm trying to highlight here is the clash between traditional and non-traditional education. I truly believe that some of our shortcomings in education have to do with the students exceeding the standards of the school, not that they're unable to meet them. Back in high school, the class I did best in was in algebra, and that's because the teacher demanded the most out of me. And that's something that I'm glad that I got good at. It's probably the thing I'm most proud of in all of my time in education. I was never even that spectacular at it, but I was more than competent. I just feel like I've learned so much more from music, movies, video games, and comedy. 
And sure, it's easier to listen to music than it is to read a textbook. However, to really learn something from the music, that takes skill, that takes talent, that takes understanding. Like one artist inspiring another to be better. Many people believe that the mind's ability to adapt whittles away as we age. What if that isn't necessarily a byproduct of our biology, though? What if that's more of a societal factor because we usually settle into routines by the time we hit our late 20s? What if there are ways to hold on to your neuroplasticity? Something I would suggest that isn't necessarily proven but it couldn't possibly hurt is trying to listen to different kinds of music. To really get your brain moving, I suggest listening to something either faster than you're used to or something in a different time signature. Something with a bit more proof behind it, but something that I'm also not suggesting whatsoever, would be, uh, certain substances, I'll just say. I don't want to get too specific, I'm not trying to make any recommendations, but the information is out there if you want to look for it. And as I stated earlier, exercise does help with this as well. I personally like doing aerobics while watching YouTube videos. There are many negative health effects from a sedentary lifestyle. I guess you could say, stillness is illness. Anyway, I just wanted to toss out my two cents. It's a topic that I wish got a bit more attention and was more in the public consciousness. But hey, the conversation's gotta start somewhere, right? Shout out to the best subscriber squad on all of YouTube, and I hope everyone has a wonderful day. Now I get to choose between either thug number one or thug number two. So who wins?